Bookland on today's show. It is playoff time, our playoff primer. We take a deep dive looking at players that have good schedules, bad schedules, how we are handling these guys in this situation. And of course, a Thursday night breakdown. Subscribe to this channel, like the video, and enjoy. Mashed potatoes, stuffing, cranberry sauce from a can. Look, there's a lot on your plate this November. Why not let Policy Genius help? By looking for lower home and auto insurance rates for you. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare home and auto insurances in one place. They can help you find coverage similar to what you have, but at a lower price. They've saved customers an average of $1,250 per year over what they were paying for home and auto insurance. Over $435 per year on auto insurance. They've saved new customers an average of $350 per year on home insurance head to policygenius.com slash footballers if they find a better rate than what you're paying now they'll switch you over for free head to policygenius.com slash footballers to get started right now policy genius when it comes to insurance it's just nice to get it right policygenius.com slash footballers welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday, November 17th, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back with a Wednesday episode of the show, playoff mm. primer today. Meg- Uh-oh. Uh, that, that, that's a sign Uh-oh. that the... <laughs> I, is that a shark? Me- the Megalobol. It's Me- not a shark. Megalobol. Megalodon. Megalodon. <laughs> the Megalodon show is a week away. Yes, sir. One week. This is this is an itty bitty baby episode this Wednesday. Compared to what we're, what's in store? That's right. I think we realized yesterday <laughs> we have a lot to do next week if we want to have a normal Thanksgiving. We do, but you know what? Foot Clan, y'all worth it. We'll get it done. We will. <laughs> y'all worth it. Twitter at the FF Ballers, join the foot.com, our fantasy football community. A reminder not only is there an episode right here, right now, mm-hmm. but we will be live on Spotify Green Room once again, as we are every single Wednesday. The party room. Yeah, that's where we party. Uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, <laughs> 6 p.m. Eastern. Grab the Spotify Green Room app, hop in there. It's a good time, it always is. Yes, it re- it really is. It's, it, it is a party. It is a fun show. We let loose, bring some people up on stage, hear from the people, and uh, talk talk through some fun topics. Uh, speaking of the Megalo Bowl, shout out to White Knuckles 4. Oh. White Knucklers 4, who is currently mm. the leader of the Megalo Bowl. They've been up there for a while. We'll see if... They, although, two losses. <laughs> Did either of you guys happen to watch the... This is not a plug. This is just me organically bringing it up because I watched it last night. Sure. The Brady documentary. Oh, I have not. No. I didn't know there was one. So it's called uh, Man in the Arena, and I think it's ESPN Plus. It is. And uh, which apparently I have because I was able to watch it. (laughs) And um, it's it's enthralling. I mean, like, we all like Brady now, right? Like, it's changed. Like, we all love him. Yeah. Him him leaving the Patriots helped his brand immensely but it was it was you know i was young when uh, he was drafted in very early in my life yes and because he's been playing 20 years 21 years but i didn't remember all the drew bledsoe situation did you guys remember any of that yeah no. like bledsoe got hurt he got hurt but he had signed a the biggest yeah con- a, a it was massive 10 year, contract 100 yes. million dollar contract and bill belichick had to make the decision to not go back to him after he was back from injury and to stick with Brady going into the playoffs. Wow. And he did. That's that's but, bold. But then Brady got hurt in the AFC title game and Bledsoe led them to the win to send him to the Super Bowl. And then he that still part went, I don't remember. And then he still went back to Brady for the Super Bowl against the Rams. Who doggy. So yeah, it was it was really it sounds like I probably gotta watch it. It was really 
pretty oh, yeah. good. And it, I guess they're going through each of his Super Bowls. So it's like a 10 part series. Gotcha. Each episode. Not a sponsor, but uh, Disney, if you want to reach out and let us, <laughs> let us know, we can work something yeah, out. Yeah, that's, uh, it was pretty good. All right, let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. Perfection. That's what we strive for. That's what Brady strives for. That's what we strive for in buy or sell. And, and perfection is what was found last week. I think this is this has never been done. Well, it's no. never been done because I think last week might have been the first time in history that we all picked the same exact thing. On We had nine picks. They were all identical. And they were all correct. So we did not miss any last week. Um, obviously, if uh, if there's deviation on our picks this week it can't we cannot do that again uh that being said it was it was narrow victories i mean deandre swift we sold as a top 12 he was number 15 uh mike williams we we bought four catches he had four on the dot mm -hmm. and then jalen hurts he did uh run away with it we all bought him as a top 12 quarterback he was a uh, he was number six so week 11 buy sell i like these names david montgomery back from injury last week Faces Baltimore. Buy or sell a top 15 running back finish this week. Last last time we saw David Montgomery, he, he came back one game before the bye, finished as the running back 35. He's going up against the Ravens, um, who, look, they are, they're allowing the fourth fewest rushing yards. This is not an easy matchup for him. I am definitely buying a top 15 running back. I think he is talented he looked good beforehand Pittsburgh's a, a difficult defense as well um but I I will buy a top 15 performance he's certainly going to be in my top 15 like rankings yeah I'm buying it as well I am as well oh come oh, on man. Man. he looked great and it was the volume was absolutely there Justin Fields coming off of his best game going into the bye week build off of that because like this isn't just a David Montgomery question it it is also a Justin Fields question to me, and I I think that we've seen enough that David Montgomery should stay up there in the top fifteen. T. Higgins facing the Raiders is he a top twenty four wide receiver this week? He's only done it once, despite a twenty five percent target share this year. No touchdown since week two. Buy or sell top twenty four Brooks? This is a tough one. Yeah, it is. Oh, this is an easy sell for me. Mm. Uh, the Raiders. I mean, yes, Tyreek Hill absolutely did work against them this past week but the Raiders have been on the season they are you know they're stingy against fantasy wide receivers they are one of the tougher matchups yeah they're number six against fantasy wide receivers uh on the course of the season what I love though is the targets that have been there for T Higgins I love his talent I think this line is outstanding good job um I want to buy I would start T Higgins but I don't think he gets that high I don't think he is a top 24 guy so we yet again, we agree. Oh, the copycat. I will sell. Well, let's see if the if we really got a copycat. What do you think, Andy? I'll buy it. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'll break I'll break from you too. I'll buy it. I think it's it's going to be close. I I do. I think it'll be you know, right around 22-23 on the week, but I think he can get it done against the Raiders because I think the Raiders will score points against Cincinnati in this game could be uh, a good one for fantasy. Justin Herbert taking on the Pittsburgh defense. Is he a top 10 quarterback? Oh, man. And uh, this is a very, very easy buy for me. I'm buying Justin Herbert as a top really? 10 quarterback. Yeah. Uh, even though Pittsburgh has been dynamic uh, and, and very good against opposing fantasy quarterbacks, it's going to happen this week. Minka Fitzpatrick would likely be out of this game. Uh, we, we saw T.J. Watt get banged up, and I think that the uh, Justin Herbert-led Chargers get it done. Yeah, T.J. Watt is still questionable as to whether or not he plays, and that, to me – is the difference in this. Uh, with T.J. Watt, their defense is outstanding. The pass rush will be in Herbert's face. I'm going to sell this. Um, you know, Mike Williams hasn't looked the same recently. A very difficult matchup. Uh, three out of the last four games for Justin Herbert. He has not been um, uh, inside of the top 15, so I, I will sell. I'm going to sell as well. He, like, he's already fringe there for me uh, for this week. A lot of names that I would easily – take over him this week and then there's a couple of guys in the you know in the in the mid teens of like Cam Newton versus Washington easily can jump into the 
the top ten this week as so a that, fantasy quarterback. So there's just there's a couple names behind Herbert that I think will push him out. Does that mean that you would actually play Cam Newton ahead of Justin Herbert? I would. In week one of Cam Newton starting. Week w Cam Newton's first touch was a touchdown. Like I, it's versus Washington. Yes, if all of his touches are goal line, <laughs> if all of his touches are on the one yard line, then Just I agree he will score a lot. Saying I, Cam Newton is he's going to continue to run, and I will take that against a delicious matchup against Herbert, who has been bad more often than he has been good this year. I don't know Rivera was asked if he has. Oh been yeah, yeah, saving I know, up. I know plays specifically in case he ever has to face Cam Newton. He said, "Yes, sir." Yeah, and I the, the league was going to figure out Lamar Jackson too. Like, <laughs> he, we'll, we'll I, I completely see that differently, Jason. Where where are you with the Cam Newton thing? Like, I would not. I agree that Cam Newton is somebody that you, if you don't have an option, like I'm, I'm going to put him out there over a like a Bridgewater level starter. But yeah, the range of outcomes in this game are vast. Yeah, Cam Newton is my stream of the week. I think he's a good play. I think he'll have uh, a, a decent week. I don't know that he has the upside. Like, I just sold Justin Herbert outside the top 15, but Justin Herbert has the talent and the ability um, to, even in a tough matchup, be the quarterback one on the week. I don't think Cam Newton has that. Um, so I, I would probably start Herbert. But to me, that is a difficult decision. I don't look at having those two on my roster and go, oh, you have to start Herbert because he's a bigger name over Cam Newton. Um, it, it's a tough call, but I would probably roll with Herbert. All right, that was Buy or Sell from pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. We do have the Thursday night preview on today's episode. Damian Harris returned to a limited practice oh, Tuesday. Man. Uh, he's still in the concussion protocol. Thursday night preview later, like I said, there's going to be a big discussion debate about Damian Harris Ramondre Stevenson, and we don't know if Harris will play, but this is step one of playing. Mm -hmm. Yep, it was a walkthrough, so he was just uh, you know involved there. Really tough to know. Today's practice report should be very telling. Elijah Mitchell, this news broke yesterday, suffered a finger fracture during Monday's game against the Rams, underwent a surgical procedure to insert a pin, Status is unclear. They were confident that maybe he can be back and practicing like next day. Yeah, the, the beat reporters seem to not worry about this at all, which means it's a problem <laughs> because this is San Francisco and I have stopped listening to their beat reporters. They they get whatever information uh, they're wrongfully told and they just spit it out. So, no, I look, the dude has a broken finger. I'm not saying he can't play this week. We've seen that before. We've, we, you know, there's, there's. This isn't the first broken finger in the NFL, but he is obviously <laughs> someone that is in charge of um, not fumbling. And uh, Jeff Wilson is getting healthier, so this is a worry for me. And um, I don't think it's just, oh, he's back at practice the next day. He's a hundred percent fine. He's dude's got a broken finger. He just had surgery on. It's not a hundred percent. This doesn't. He's a human being. It doesn't make sense to me. Like anyone out there who's gotten. If you've had a small surgery, like you've had a mole removed, just anything that re that involves a uh, a knife in your skin, that area of your body hurts for multiple days. Dude, paper cut. And <laughs> yes, a paper cut. And you're saying that it's your finger, which is pretty important to holding on to a football. And you're like, oh, well, you can numb it up. Okay, if you numb up your finger, <laughs> you don't want to do that. It becomes very difficult to hold on to a football. Like. So maybe he does play, but this is just – We do have precedent. I don't understand how this can even work. We do have precedent. We do have – pre. Uh, I know that there have been a number of running backs that this has happened to. Surgery, pin, played that week. But we will see uh, Debo Samuel also day-to-day -day with a shin bruise. You think I'm not coming down with a full chop on your hand every <laughs> single time I can? Yeah, it's, 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 it does seem questionable, right? <laughs> Um, also, Cordero Patterson will be a game time decision. That is from head oh, coach boy. Arthur Smith. Oh, Arthur! I believe he was limited yesterday. Uh, so we shall see what happens with Cordero. I, it's not a good matchup. And I mean, a dude with an—if it's actually a sprained ankle, I mean, how can you trust that against New England? Yeah, Ugh. you you saw in years past when uh, 
Saquon and Alvin Kamara, great superstars, came back from an ankle injury. They weren't quite ready right, right off the bat. So it's so it, hard because Atlanta has no pass catching options. The, so Cordero could be fine. Yeah, he he could be. He could just catch five passes and, and in a PPR over. league, yeah, be you know be serviceable enough to get a start out of. But I I would am I am still skeptical that he plays. I, game time decision. Sure. I'm gonna guess that he does not play. Okay. And then we have uh, Miles Sanders designated to return from injured reserve. Today's the playoff primer. I'm just going to say it right now. I think Miles Sanders is is a potential league winner. Uh, it, yeah, the, I agree. This team is committed to the running game. He's by far their best runner. We saw it on the limited amount of carries he got before the injury, and they play a juicy playoff schedule. I would be looking his direction. I really would in trade. Yeah, this is a great time of year. He's the perfect type of target because he was a borderline waiver wire uh, drop candidate and so it's not going to cost much to get him and you you risk very little mm -hmm. the reward is outstanding I mean if they've I mean you said they're committed to the run they weren't when they had Miles Sanders they get Jordan Howard they're like oh man you see what we could do on the grab <laughs> when they get Miles Sanders back I think maybe they should they should go oh this guy's even better they are running 68% of the time yes, in neutral finally. game skip, scripts. Uh, he has to be activated, though, by 4 p.m. on Saturday to play Sunday. So that's the way that works with the uh, window to be you know, activated in play. So you can pay attention to that. Um, we have other news. Joe Flacco. Yes, Joe Flacco is going to start for the Jets this week <laughs> against the Dolphins. Uh, not Mike White. Not Zach Wilson. That Joe Flacco, man, what do you? So that's a thing. What do you do with like Michael Carter now? Where, not that he was, you're super psyched to play Michael Carter ever, but you know if if Mike White is there, the running backs are going to see thirty plus percent of the targets. Can you feel safe that that's going to happen with Flacco? I, I don't think you can feel safe that that's going to happen. Um, I I don't, uh, you know, look, he's he's in the pocket. He's a statue. He's uh, willing to. You know, in this version of Flacco, like early career was a down the field gunslinger type, and then he really changed to the short targets. So I'm not too worried about that. I mean, my okay. ceiling wasn't very high on Michael Carter, anyways. It does kind of bump up Jamison Crowder to me because it's the short target wide receiver that he hyper targeted before. Um, so you know, uh, now I'm I'm maybe willing to like throw Crowder into a lineup, whereas before I wasn't. All right, and uh, Le'Veon Bell, your days are done. Waved by the Ravens. This probably means that Latavius Murray is ready to be activated. Just max confidence in Devonta Freeman. Like, we just want to give him the backfield I mean, by himself. It, and for out there, the, the Tyson Williams truthers, if you're holding on to the hope that maybe he gets involved now, I would say probably not because they had three active running backs this past week, and Williams just – doesn't get on the field and I've leaned with Jason that it's Latavius will be back the three of them will be active Tyson will be the emergency running back and they won't use him because he's just he's too fast uh that was today's news and notes presented by <laughs> sleeper the leader in breaking news alerts grab the sleeper app check out their breaking news alerts channel uh, it's faster than every other source let's do some pl playoff primer playoff primer Did we have that drop before? No, that's a new one. I was, was going to say, say I, yeah. I do not remember that at all. What we have great memories. You, yes, Mike does. Uh, we're known yeah. for, for was, that. Yeah, when I have someone, I'm like, man, I cannot remember what happened. I turn to you two fellas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> especially like yesterday, <laughs> right, right. Uh, let's start with discussions on playoff strategy in general because we're going into week 11. Uh, playoff weeks are what 15, 16, 17. And playoff matchups are not the be all end all, right? You're Correct. not going to bench all your best players just to play ones that have slightly better matchups. In fact, even on today's show, we're going to break down some of the players with advantageous playoff matchups and bad ones. But again, you're you're looking at data and information from weeks one through ten accumulated. So there are defenses that we've seen year after year that improve vastly. Like Tennessee right now right. is a 
it's it's a bit of a trap if you're basing your lineup decisions just looking on their year long numbers. They're they're playing much better than their accumulation of data. They are a smash play on paper for quarterbacks, wide receivers, except they haven't been, and they've turned mm -hmm. it around, and they aren't actually a smash play anymore. So that's a good point. And um, you on the flip side, you're going to have great players who have lousy matchups, and you don't want to overreact to that. On on today's episode, I'll I'll spoil it already. We're about to go into the quarterbacks. Josh Allen projects for one of the worst quarterback playoff matchups. And I thought to myself, self, last year <laughs> Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs won the most fantasy championships for players in fantasy football. He dominated during the fantasy playoffs. And I, so Brooks and I went back and we looked at last year's playoff primer to see when you got a superstar, did he have a really nice schedule. He had one of the worst schedules for the playoff matchups. When I look at playoff primer, I'm talking about middle of the pack players. I don't really care if a, a phenomenal player has a bad strength of schedule in the playoffs. They they don't count to studs. You know what I mean? Like Derrick Henry in a bad matchup is still Derrick Henry. I mean, not anymore because right. he's injured. But, um, but like I, Dalvin Cook in a bad matchup. Right, I'm it's not. Still, it's still Dalvin. I remember we had. It was this last year that we had the discussion of Henry had the incredible schedule, and Dalvin Cook had a bad one. Yeah, I think and it that's was right. and it was like, do you actually go out and trade Dalvin Cook because of the matchups for Henry? Yeah, I mean, I, at least they're stud to stud. But the, I, I think the point here is when I'm when I'm focused on great playoff schedules, it's four players that I think are affected by right. their matchup more. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, now you're bringing back my incredible memory of <laughs> deciding to play the Tom Brady only one half against Detroit game versus Josh Allen against New England and it was it was worrisome and then Josh Allen just destroyed the Patriots mm -hmm. through and through. Last I mean last year Lamar Jackson was a player that we highlighted on this show. Um you had league winners like Jimmy Graham break out of you know, come out of oh, nowhere. Oh man. Number one tight end in championship week was Jimmy Graham, Irv Smith, who obviously out for the year, uh, but was a big tight end winner in playoffs last year. So looking at the quarterback position, um, we have a strength of schedule tool in the arsenal at the fantasyfootballers.com that we're utilizing here. But, and we brought it up early in the week, but Jalen Hurts jumps out mm -hmm. as a player that, um, you know, he's been very consistent throughout the year. But I think in championship weeks, you know, you are also looking for upside. You're looking for the potential to be number one, number two on the week. And he has the privilege of two Washington matchups out of three playoff weeks. That's so good. Washington is the number one most fantasy points given up to the quarterback position. They just lost Chase Young. You know, some we we're just talking some defenses get stronger and healthier as the season goes along. They lost their superstar pass rusher. Yeah. Um, so it, it's not looking great for. Um, the Washington football team defense to be able to play them twice in the playoffs. Obviously, this will coincide with um, uh, the the wide receivers as well. Um, but Jalen Hurts is certainly someone someone to target because he is actually able to put up you know a forty point game. Um, he's not past his prime, uh, so I would be targeting Jalen Hurts. Now, it is worth knowing noting. He has a week uh, 14, 14 bye. Yes. So we are talking about playoffs in week 15, 16, 17. That is, I think, what 90% of your leagues out there are. However, your league might be different. Maybe it's 14 through 17, in which case the first week of the playoffs, he ain't playing. Or maybe you play in the last week of football in those leagues. I apologize for you and your family. Don't do that. But if you do... You should apologize to your family. Right. Um, if you play in week 18, Andy was talking about the strength schedule tool. Um, if you use that on the website under the Foot Clan tools, you can change the week ranges to whatever you want. And see who has the best 16, 17, 18. Or exactly. Whatever. But in just the last note, I mean, it goes without... It's one of those things, but just pointing it out. If you are a team that is, you have to win out to get in, Jalen Hurts may not be the target for you because you've got to have a good quarterback in week 14. And I'll, I'll just give you a personal examination that I did yesterday. Like, I have Justin Herbert, and he has a he's another player that has a very good playoff schedule. He faces Kansas City, who is 
behind Washington as the number two best matchup. Then he faces Houston. That's that's great because you know he's going to give you something, and he may give you a lot. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him, and I looked at Jalen Hurts, and I was even messaging Jason on the show, like, we got to make a deal for Jalen Hurts. And then I saw that week 14 by, and then I was just like, I don't know if – I don't know if that change for me is worth it with a player like uh, Justin Herbert, who's given, you know, there's been four huge weeks for him mm -hmm. with those matchups. So again, it's, it's what you have. Um, how big of an upgrade is it? I'm going to say something that has never been uttered on this show before. Mm, I, I dare you. Well, I look, it's, it's almost right at you, Mike. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo has yeah. a great playoff schedule. You want to know why? Because the phrase Trey Lance has a great playoff schedule has been uttered over five thousand times. Excuse me. Six thousand. Six thousand. <laughs> and Jimmy Garoppolo just happens to be the starting quarterback of said team. So we've never really acknowledged Stupid Rams. the reality. <laughs> yeah, really. That's a big deal this last week. I mean, Jimmy is uh he's got Atlanta, he's got Tennessee, and he's got Houston. It doesn't get better than that. Now I I make no bones about it. Those will be the most three, the three most terrifying starts of your life if you have to go that route. But we've been here before. We've been with the Blake Bortles and the Alex Smiths. We've been there during these fantasy championship weeks, and you could do worse. No, I, you, I, I love it uh, because not only does he have Atlanta and Tennessee and Houston, um, he's got Debo Samuel. <laughs> I mean, you don't yes. have to be a great quarterback to throw a screen pass. I'll say that. Like, if you're looking at Carson Wentz, and he's been your starter, and you haven't looked at Jimmy Garoppolo, because why would you? And then you look at Carson Wentz, and he plays New England and Arizona in weeks uh, 15 and 16, and Jimmy Garoppolo is a – I mean, I would play Garoppolo over Carson Wentz in both of those games. Oh, for sure. I would say the, the my hesitation for going that direction, not that – Garoppolo, in his range of outcomes, is good fantasy weeks. He has two – uh, he has two top ten games this season, and Kittle's finally back. And Kittle's yeah, everybody's back. The diff the biggest difference to me between like that Blake Bortles year was the teams can score, teams could score on that Jacksonville team, and while the the matchups are juicy for fantasy numbers for the offense, like Atlanta, Tennessee, and Houston, does that just turn into? Because San Francisco wants to run, 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 run all day long, and then have Garoppolo throw on third down. Does like that matchup against Atlanta? Will they be able to do enough against the Forty ers That would be my hesitation for streaming Garoppolo. Well, uh, Big Ben does have a great playoff schedule. I no personally am a no on that. He's, one. A, he's called a trap. Um, <laughs> you you look and you see. Uh, Tennessee is one of those great ones. That's the first matchup, and we just talked about that. Tennessee's defense is better than its number four ranking on the year. And how many times has Big Ben been in the top 12? I'm guessing zero. You are correct. He's only been in the top 23 times this year. He has not missed games oh, yet. Oh, he's due. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you know, well, he no, gets better as the season goes yeah. on. We yeah, saw with, that at the end of last with year. With less Claypool, less Juju, that really yeah. helps as well. Uh, Kyler, Aaron Rodgers, and Dak Prescott all have very nice playoff schedules as well. Kyler's lines up great. Detroit, Indianapolis, and, and Dallas. I, Indy's at home. I mean, that's a that's a smash schedule. Kyler, to me, is the league winner here this year. Last year's Lamar Jackson, the one that is truly someone that can go out and score 40, 50 points easily in great matchups, who right now has been injured. Their managers might be struggling. They need someone. I would I would be trading for Kyler, who might not play this week, has a bye week next week. You know what I mean? Like, managers might not be in a position where they can just keep holding on to Kyler if they need sure. to manufacture wins. And his playoff schedule, Detroit, Indy, Dallas, I want Kyler in those matchups, especially because they're holding him out to get him healthy. So healthy Kyler at that point, he is a league winner. I agree. And... um We'll talk about some of these worst matchups as well. Uh, I want to thank today's sponsors. IP Vanish, thank you for sponsoring today's episode. If you haven't heard us talk about them before, IP Vanish is a VPN, a virtual private network. It's an important tool that you can use to safely browse the internet. Uh, you can use it on computers, tablets, phones, things like a Fire Stick, streaming media devices. 
what's the gist? The gist is your data is encrypted when you use a VPN. So what mm -hmm. you're reading, what you're searching, what you're watching. Um, we've been doing some like home remodel stuff and uh, I don't have the VPN on one of those computers. And, Whoops. And they are tracking every, I mean, like everything that we've talked about has showed up on that screen. Uh, and it's almost eerie sometimes how that works. And it, and what's nice is IP Vanish is super easy to use. Uh, you turn it on with a click of a button. It runs seamlessly in the background. We've got it running on all of our kids' devices to help protect them as well. Go to IPVanish.com slash footballers. Claim your 65% savings. Their annual plan is just $44.99 for the whole year with the discount. This is the time to sign up. With our discount and the current promotional offerings, you can get a VPN for 65% off the usual cost. IP Vanish is the best of the best. They're rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and that's with 6,000 reviews, so you can trust them. Remember, it's IPVanish.com slash footballers to get that deal and start protecting yourself online. And guys, engagement season is in full swing. Jewelry stores, they're packed with soon-to-be grooms. They're throwing around words like cut, color, clarity, carrot. We don't know what we're talking about over there. And then you forget that you yourself, you're going to get a band. And like in the past, it's been, fellas, I'll take uh, that one. We just, you haven't thought about it, but you realize this is a ring that's important and you're going to be wearing it every day for the rest of your life. Why not get a good one? And that's what Manly Bands is all about. They're offering incredible rings made out of incredible materials. Check this out. Imagine wearing a wedding band made out of, I don't know, carbon fiber, meteorite, Damascus steel, wood, antler, even dinosaur bone. I got this awesome ring from them that has like UV reaction. So under black light, there's part of it that like glows green. It's just like this little hidden gem of my ring that is super awesome. And to get started, for, uh, go to manlybands.com slash footballers. If you don't know your size, you can order the, the manly ring sizer. Includes 26 plastic rings, whole and half sizes from 5 to 20. They're going to help you out. And right now, a big sale is going on. We're talking 25% off. So whether it's your first band or an upgrade, go to manlybands.com slash footballers or use the promo code footballers to get 25% off now through Cyber Monday. That's 25% off at manlybands.com slash footballers or use the promo code footballers. All right, uh, Jason, you said Josh Allen's in your lineup no matter the matchup. Is that go for Patrick Mahomes too with the Chargers-Pittsburgh, two tough defenses? For yep. Yep. What about uh, if Cam Newton helps you out, he's going to have a hard time in your first playoff week, Buffalo, so just be aware I, of that, and a week 13 Yeah, bye. I'm not going to play Cam Newton. Cam Newton is a streamer, and Buffalo is a do not stream against. All right, the running backs. So let's look at some of the best running back schedules as of right now heading into the fantasy football playoffs. Hmm. <laughs> was that the – wait, was that the shark again? No, no, that was too happy for a shark. I just – there are a couple of guys that I – absolutely love targeting right now it's nice when you're out surfing if you're on alert for like sharks that you can hear them coming because of the growls <sighs> oh yeah. Well, yeah people always look for the fin but if you listen right. closely <laughs> that's the sound that you hear one of them coming and it's weird like they just say what they are right yeah, yeah. They, they, they don't say like i'm gonna that's, eat you most <laughs> most animals do bear <laughs> most animals do that when they're <laughs> bear 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 <laughs> they're like pokemon <laughs> Pikachu. Well, in that case, I hope you don't hear a <laughs> mag because you right. toast. It's you, too late. It's too late. Yeah. At that point, when you run into one of those, you hope to get, you want to be swallowed. Full swallow. Full swallow. Oh, no, whole. you want the teeth. Otherwise, you're going in. No, and if I go in full swallow, maybe I can come out the other end. Yeah, I don't want I, the alive. teeth. Alive. <laughs> did, did you just say you want the teeth? Yes. You want to be shredded alive. Yes, end it. Torn to pieces. If you, you don't want to live in that belly. I mean, they're big, Mike. You that can, belly is going to smash you. I don't know. Pinocchio <laughs> showed me that you can. <laughs> that documentary showed me you can live in there. Mm -hmm. um, all right. David Montgomery, is he going to do it in back-to-back -back years? Yes, he, he is. The short answer is yes. What about the – is the long answer also yes? The long answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, last Affirmative. year, David Montgomery, We a lot was made in this offseason about how he beat up on the easy schedule. Well, good to know he can do that. He's looked really good this year. Yes. He hasn't had the fantasy production you want because of, uh, obviously, the injuries that have come along the way. But Minnesota, Seattle, the New York Giants, those are three good matchups in weeks 15, 16, and 17. Um, I – 
he is, I think, exactly what you said, Andy. It's back-to-back -back years where he's going to win people championships. Let's also talk about James Robinson. Houston and New York, the Jets, for the first two weeks. That's delightful. He's probably going to smash the rest of this year. I he, mean, he is too good and too involved, and ultimately this team, it's going to be so interesting in the offseason to see what they do and what the what the fantasy football community – how they view James Robinson because there was concern about dynasty value with Travis Etienne and then redraft value with Travis Etienne. And now are we going to do it again? Like is, it, is the template there to where we're going to doubt him completely again? Yeah. Yeah. I think that, the, <laughs> I think that we will make that mistake and it's, it's really hard to know how the utilization will work when Etienne is back, but we know he's not back this season. The rest of it's not just the playoffs. Really, the rest of the way, he's got maybe one or two hard matchups, and everything else is is uh, easy living. So, uh, J James Robinson, David Montgomery, and uh, I've said it for weeks now, mm -hmm. personally, Javante, those are my three big targets for the playoffs. Do you have? You are doing the same Trey Lance thing. We need to also mention Melvin Gordon. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Because, Melvin Gordon. Because Melvin Gordon is easier to acquire in yes. trades. Uh, the Javante Williams hype may not come to fruition this year. Everybody wants it to happen. It may not happen. He had eight carries last week. Yeah. Absolutely. No, Melvin Gordon has been phenomenal um, and should be targeted as well. The projection of end of season, you know, the rookie getting a slightly more work and maybe the timeshare changing, that's just a projection. That hasn't happened yet. Um, ironically, we did see right right before this week when he only had the eight carries, he actually – did have his snaps and touches go up. His, his utilization actually overtook Melvin Gordon. It didn't work out because Gordon got uh, uh, the touchdown. Javante was called like, back. Well, a it, was lot just of the, the, it was the snaps, not the touches. Yeah, and a lot of those snaps, I believe, came after the Melvin Gordon fumble. So it, it remains to be seen if that's a one-week uh, yeah, punishing. Or do you have interest right now? And if one of them were to go down. Oh, yes. It, it, league, that player changes. Uh, do you have interest in... He, he doesn't have three straight weeks of incredible matchups, but he it bookends with week 15 and week 17 with great matchups. But Clyde edwards alaire supposed to be back this week for the Kansas City Chiefs. It is real up in the air what that situation is. Darrell Williams has played extremely well. Does Darrell Williams hold the job? Does Clyde go to 60% of the job? Like I, What does that look I, like? I or, and is that worth the risk of going to trade for Clyde right now? It's a great question. I did a lot of deep diving on these two players this morning. Oh, actually. fantastic! And uh, specifically the receiving work. Like this game, I, I think it. I think Daryl Williams is maybe the sneakiest ad right now in fantasy football to be a potential league winner. Clyde now Clyde could absolutely do that as well be, based on the schedule, but it's definitive statistically and in action by Andy Reid, who we all trust, that Daryl's a better pass catcher, period. End of sentence. You look at the last two seasons, Daryl catches a much higher percentage of his passes. He makes more out of them. He catch, He has a better yards per reception. He has a better, more, more long plays in that game. And then he just went out and put up nine for 101 and one. So what do I think is going to happen? I think Daryl has a carved out permanent role on a great offense. How that split goes, it's anybody's guess. I would be pure; it'd be pure speculation to whether or not I think he'll get any first and second down work. But I think they're both going to be involved in the same way that, you know, we talk about a Melvin Gordon and a Javante Williams from a snap perspective and a use perspective. You know, Clyde is catching ten percent fewer of his targets than Daryl has his entire career, and he's not as explosive. He just isn't. So I don't know what that will look like. I don't know what the team will do, but that's, you know, I was trying to figure out why this is happening, and I think those numbers back up what the team does. Yeah, that's that's where it gets wild to me, where it, looking at when they were actually sharing time uh, between Daryl and Clyde, you know, they're both getting a handful of targets uh, per week where – it. But not a not a huge volume going to the running back position, which is very bizarre for 
historically speaking for for Andy Reid teams of them not utilizing the uh, the running back in the pass catching game and then you have it feels like there's been a intentional shift over the last month or so uh, you know month and a half that no this is something in fact that we need to do and so you have to as a as a fantasy football player this is making your projection where Andy's projecting it's going to be Daryl Williams, uh, or or make your projection that it's going to be Clyde edwards alaire I think that you can make. The problem a, is, I think Daryl's passing. I think he's the passing guy, and I think that Clyde's going to get a lot more work the when they're winning. And so you're looking at that more like McKissick and Gibson, and Clyde's proven to be a really you know he he went into his injury with two solid weeks on the ground with lots of volume. But saying like you could make a very, uh, I'm not always one to try and talk down the price of a player because it's usually you could see right through people like well you know I'll just take them off your hands like yeah no there's a With, reason there's a reason you're trying to trade for this player right now but you can make a very compelling case to trade for either sure. of these players for Clyde is look what Daryl Williams yep. has done yep. and like or if it's Daryl Williams Clyde's coming back he's an expiring fantasy football asset you uh, so I, I think Darryl it would be will easy be to get I think it's easier to get both of them right now than it has ever been for either player. I, I agree, and I think Daryl will be the, the more affordable option. I don't agree with Andy that he's just the passing guy and that he's a, a way – I mean, Clyde, in limited touches this year, he's caught 80%, 12 yards of carry, better than Daryl so, or per reception. But, um, oh, is he at 12? Uh, yeah, he, he he was great, unfortunately got injured. I, I No, he's not. He's at 7.6 a catch this year. Yeah, he's averaging. So, you're you're looking. Oh, he's, at, he's averaging twelve game. receiving yards yes. per game. Um, but still, which eight, is eighty percent of his catches. I know his rookie year, he was like sixty-seven percent, something like that for for Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I I just don't think that it's a fully one hundred percent guarantee that it's a carved out role you, for for either. I think they could split and both be, um, you know, kind of impeding the other's fantasy value. Um, I also looked back at like Jonathan Taylor, DeAndre Swift, and Clyde edwards helaire in college, and Clyde was a high volume but low yards per catch in college compared to those two guys from an explosive standpoint. So I don't know if they're looking Swift for— Swift and who? Jonathan Taylor. Gotcha. So um, I don't know if it's one of those things where like they just want the explosive play with Damian. I mean, that Darrell Williams catching the end zone, Clyde ain't doing that. I mean, he's too small to do that. And uh, so it'll be very interesting. Clyde's probably the higher ceiling here, though. If you want to look at the best shot, you know, you talk about Gibson being great in games they're winning, mm -hmm. Jacobs being great in games they're winning, the schedule sets up for them to go on a run, and you you think Clyde might be on the field more in that case. Daryl Henderson has a great playoff schedule. He is so difficult right now for me to get behind because he leaves the field every single game. The team has been he up does. and down, but I still think he's a buy. And, I agree. And yeah, he yeah, struggled, yeah. what, 37th at the position two weeks in a row, still a top 12 on the year. Mm -hmm. DeAndre Swift has a juicy week 17 or 16 and 17. That'll be a difficult trade for, though. And then the, the 49ers, you know, the, the running backs there, Elijah Mitchell, who looks like the guy, and then Jeff Wilson in the background with juicy week 15 and 17. Yeah, we talk about Jimmy Garoppolo and Mike's caution there of, well, what if they just run the ball well? They might do both, but I know they're going to run the ball well. You know what I mean? Like, the 49ers will run the ball, uh, so I, I love Elijah Mitchell, M Mitchell and Jeff Wilson. Do what do you, you think about Debo? Do you think Debo's going – like, before last week where he got the five carries, he hadn't actually got a carry for, like, four or five weeks. Do you think that is prescriptive for, wow, this is really – you know, we, we didn't have Jermichael Hayes, the um, – we're going to work Debo into this three ba person no, backfield. I, I don't think so. I think it was. I think it was game planning the Rams. I think they wanted to run ninety five percent of the time against the Rams to uh, keep the offense off the field, more so than just let's work him in as a third running back. Uh, a quick note, you know, going out and trading for these running backs. It's not always. You can't always accomplish it. You could be, uh, you know, a contender could have these guys, and you just, you can't get them. Uh, but part of this is perhaps you prioritize the backups from these teams, where knowing that if mm -hmm. look if James Robinson unfortunately misses time, 
Oh, that's such a good point. Urban Meyer's going to go to Carlos Hyde and as a bell cow runner, and he will have the same matchups. He doesn't yeah. have the same ceiling as Robinson, but he's still going to end up being a top 20, top 15 running back on the week in those games. Yeah, you're not going to play Carlos Hyde against Buffalo, but against Houston and the Heck Jets, yeah. you, you sure are. So when you're looking at stashes, like we brought up on the mm -hmm. waiver show yesterday, you might prioritize some of the better scheduled stashes. Yeah, like which stashes. would be uh, Carlos Hyde, Khalil Herbert, um, uh, Melvin Gordon, <laughs> J Jamal Williams. It, yeah, Jamal absolutely. Williams is, yeah, he's it's difficult because he's been hurt the last couple. Sony weeks. Michelle, yes, and uh, Jeff Wilson, oh. and then Miles Sanders is the last one I'll mention. He has a week fourteen by, but does have Washington twice and the Giants. And if they keep running the football, he could be interesting. Worst running back schedules. I'll be really brief with it because I want to know if you think you should trade these guys away or you're worried. McCaffrey has the worst. Don't, it's Buffalo, Tampa Bay, New Orleans. Don't care. Yeah, he's one you don't care. If, if you ask me, it's funny because if you ask me, like, give me three teams that you don't want to play in the playoffs, <laughs> I'd be like, yeah. on the running game, I'd be like, yeah. oh, Buffalo, Tampa Bay, New Orleans. That Two would, of them on the road, please. I think that would be the. I think that would be the exact three, the three worst. But he's uh, that's a that's a running back schedule, and he's a wide receiver, so yep. he's probably all right. Damien Harrison, Ramondre Stevenson, they play Indianapolis and Buffalo in weeks 15 and 16. Woof. Uh, me seeing this right now, having those two guys on my League of Record team, yeah, I, I'm sure right now Al Borland is kind of grinning <laughs> over there as my division mate. Uh, are you worried about that? Yeah. I, yes, I yeah. would be concerned about Definitely, that. Definitely. Um, They're a team committed to the run. This is where when you've got Christian McCaffrey and Alvin Kamara also has a bad uh, schedule, I don't worry about those guys. Um, when you've got those middle of the pack guys who've had some good games, had some bad games like Damon Harris, uh, Ramondre Stevenson, Ian really tough to run on matchups. And um, another name is Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs does not have a great schedule, and he's been one where you, you really need it to go well for the you know for the Raiders for Josh Jacobs to have a good game. I worry about those players quite a bit. All right, anybody else on that list that you are highly concerned about? No, Kamara's got a bad schedule, but he's he's Alvin Kamara. All right, some wide receivers that I want to bring to the service. Hey, what do you know? Debo Samuel has a, <laughs> one of the best playoff match. Another smile from Al Borland over there. It, for those out there, I might as well let people follow along. Al and I are in the same division in our league of record. We have the same exact record at 7-3, and three, and... One of a, I don't remember who's who's got more points this year. <laughs> You've got four more points. Scored. Four more points on the year. So we are in a a true battle. He just made some trades yesterday that I didn't like because it makes him better. And you guys, both of your teams, I would say, are the two best teams. Well, thank currently. you, Mike. That's nice to hear. I didn't think that about my it. team. His team is is outstanding. But um, yeah, it's going to be fun. We're going to go head to head, and we'll see if he's still employed at the end of the year. Yeah, and if Debo is still playing at the end of the year, he will be winning people championships, period. Now you're a man, a man, a man, a man. Are you it's stashing Brandon Ayuk? You can't make me do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sure. Yes. He's I mean, and this is not a – this isn't a question. Of, is Brandon Ayuk back? This is a question of – like, he is – he's like a backup running back, cause, and Debo has – been proven he has proven he's quite fragile if Debo doesn't get hurt this year has this schedule and wins people titles after going he'd be number one number two number three at the mm -hmm. position it will be the most ultimate Debo Samuel like rid all demons mm -hmm. uh set the league on fire and if he closes it with this schedule on the field he's going to just miss 2022 <laughs> skip a year <laughs> uh Hey, how about this? Devontae Smith, those two Washington games. Yep. Uh, and the Giants. That makes uh, sense. Looks good. Finally, one good matchup on a player I have. Yeah, and you, you want these rookies who often have a better second half of the year. So Devontae Smith, even Elijah Moore for the Jets. Jalen Waddle. Yep. We're going to talk about those uh, three guys a little bit more on tomorrow's episode too, but it's worth noting that they have great schedules. So this is really lining up well for them. Um, and what about the Steelers? We talk about Big Ben. Big Ben has a great schedule, and we're like, nope. But that schedule applies to the pass catchers. So Deontay Johnson, he seems like uh, you know a really, really, really good uh, guy to have as your wide receiver two for a championship run. Great schedule. Any of these players that I mentioned in the worst wide receiver schedules, you're trading away. Terry McLaurin has one of the worst. 
He's also been banged up. Are you trying to cash in on Terry McLaurin's name right now with the way that this team is trending? Ryan Fitzpatrick will not be back. I I don't mind it. Like if you could go trade Terry McLaurin for Terry McLaurin and something probably to get Deontay, would that be a target? Yes. Yeah, I would do that. Um, the Falcons, not that they have any receivers you love, but who knows? Calvin Ridley could come back. They have a tough schedule. Um, could be one of those things where like if, if Ridley was announced to be returning to the team, yeah, maybe you go trade that name. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry, Judy, Corlin Sutton, and Tim Patrick and company, tough receiver schedule. Yeah, it's not too bad the first week of the playoffs, but the uh, semifinals and finals week 16 and 17 are about as bad as it gets. I don't view them as matchup proof. So, yeah, you, you don't want to really be relying on uh, Jerry, Judy, and Cortland Sutton. Uh, um, Mike, I, I want to know your opinion here. We built this Ooh. Michael Pittman has one of the worst schedules for wide receivers to end the year. We just talked about Carson Wentz and I, how I'd be moving on. New England, Arizona in Arizona, and then the Raiders, who have been great against wide receivers. Is he a trade high candidate? Is this the moment that you should make the move? Man, uh, if you are able to trade for his actual, like the value that he has brought right now, which is where is he on the year? He's got to be right now. He's the wide receiver nine. So yeah, he's got to be a top twelve guy right now. Yes. So if you can make that move to, it's still a wide receiver one. I am not trading down in the slightest for. Like I'm not taking Buffalo, Michael. New England the next two weeks before that tough schedule. Buffalo, Tampa Bay. Like I'm no, not. I'm sorry. Buffalo, they do Tampa have Bay. New England's uh, all-time passing leader, um, though. Tampa Bay does. Tom Brady. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm not taking Michael Pittman and turning him into Devontae Smith. I was about plus. to ask that. No, I would. You, you wouldn't do that. No, I'd rather. Jason, would you? I'd ride it out with Pittman. Um, man, for if I know for sure that I'm locked into the playoffs, I think I would rather have. Devon Smith, but I would I would still be aiming higher. You can get more. He's a he's been on fire. Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson is the name that I would that I would personally go you could after. get Deon you should be able to get Johnson plus. Yeah, for Deontay Pittman. Johnson plus something else. Great. It's hard when guys have, it's their breakout year to know what the value is. Because I think that those are the players that swing pretty dramatically in leagues in terms of, you know, there could be somebody that if Ridley came back, they would not trade Ridley for Pittman. You know what I mean? Like right. just because Pittman's done it for and, and a little while. Deontay has been very steady, very good, but tremendously lacking a ceiling this year. Yeah. He hasn't, he hasn't, uh, he has exploded. one, he has a top six week, but other than that, he's, he's basically like the wide receiver 20. That's because, and I'll say it again, the Steelers will not have a breakout offensive performance. They can't do it. Right. It's not possible. You keep waiting for old Steelers to have one of those 40-point weeks, they won't do it. This is why I said I love Deontay as my number two. Yep. Because he is he is safe. He is steady. He is going to have a solid game. But he will not win you your championship. Um, he's just someone that if he's your wide receiver two, your wide receiver three, your flex, that's where I love him. Stephon Diggs, you know, you talked about not benching Allen. You're not benching Diggs. Are no. you trading Diggs? Worried about him at all? Nope. No. All right. Uh, let's look at some tight ends with – Let's just look at some tight ends. That's it. Okay. Hey. Uh, Noah Fant, Hunter Henry, Hunter Dan Henry. Arnold. Juicy matchups. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about Dan Arnold and Hunter Henry a lot lately because Hunter Henry doesn't know how to stop scoring touchdowns, and Dan Arnold is a focal point of the offense since he became a Jacksonville Jaguar. Those two guys have great playoff schedules. They are phenomenal. The only other one that I would look at is maybe Logan Thomas. I don't know how long it's going to take for him to get back. We've talked about this for a while, and obviously he, he kind of has re-aggravated his hamstring, but um, he's, got f he's got a phenomenal playoff schedule. If he comes back healthy, he could be the league winner. He's got a tremendous schedule from here on out, but I, he, he's, if he's hurt, it's hard to stash him. But Still the, on the IR. Yeah, the combination of, depending on the size of your, of your bench, of course, but the combination of Dan Arnold and Logan Thomas, I think, puts you in a really good position moving forward if you can if roster two tight ends. There's one tight end with a bad schedule in the year I'm actually very concerned about, and that is T.J. Hawkinson because he begins the first playoff week against Arizona, who are, who's the best team against opposing tight ends, and now we have precedent that Hawkinson can be number one. He can also goose you. 
you can't afford a goose from your tight end in the playoffs. Do you guys agree that Hawkinson would be somebody that maybe you try to flip to a different option? I do agree. Yeah, I, I think that if you can, uh, I mean, it's hard to upgrade from Hawkinson, especially after a goose. Um, and right. really, there's only what three guys you can full confidence upgrade to. Um, Kelsey Kittle, Waller, yeah, exactly Andrews. Andrews. Yeah, so four four guys that you is know Waller, for sure. Is Waller still in that. I don't know. Um, but I would agree that TJ Hawkinson going into your fantasy playoffs against Arizona is bad. On the flip side, if you're looking at the strength of schedule, another bad matchup is Kyle Pitts. And I do think matchups matter for Pitts big time. I think they do too. However, I, there's a difference when it comes to tight end defenses where sometimes tight, teams don't score – uh, against him with the tight end because they, they they don't really need to. You can run on the team. They're an easy defense. And sometimes, like Arizona, it's just a really good defense. Well, the first two bad matchups are San Francisco and Detroit. I don't think those guys have someone that they could just roll onto Kyle Pitts and lock them down. You know, they don't have the Marshawn Lattimore or the Diggs to just put on them. So I'm not too afraid about Kyle Pitts to begin the playoffs. Buffalo in the championship week is a problem. Well, and I, I do want to highlight, you talk about rookies. We've been talking about the wide receivers. The last five games that Kyle Pitts has played, he is pacing for 85 receptions and 1,417 yards receiving. How do they not – if Matt Ryan throws for 225 a game, we'll, we'll be real conservative with Matt Ryan numbers. Where is it going? Yeah, if Calvin Ridley doesn't score, come back. But, I mean, Pitts has only scored one time this year. He's yeah. the tight end five. It's madness. So if he scores, for goodness sakes, it, there's a chance for him. Gesicki – Tough week, fifth, 16 and 17. Dawson Knox, I don't know what to think about Dawson Knox right now, I but would, I hope he gets back on track this week. I would bail. Defenses, maybe the most important yes. thing that you've got to worry about because you can do it in advance. Matchups are more predictable after 10 weeks in this department. So let's talk about some of our favorites because, you know, Buffalo gets the privilege. It, it, if you have Buffalo... <laughs> You're not going to drop them. You probably, I mean, can you acquire them? Can you, because people don't maybe value the defenses enough, but would you maybe trade for the Buffalo Bills defense? Yeah, you, you can acquire them if you do it in a deal where it's like you're trading similar wide receivers and then you're, you're swapping your defenses in the same deal. Right. For somebody who wants a receiver. So that's the way I would look. Like if you're doing the, uh, like a Pittman, Deontay, and then you throw both of your defenses in there to sneak them in. Yeah, I, I would love that because the, the Buffalo Bills are, the, they're the one that stands out as both good schedule but also awesome defense. Like the Jacksonville Jaguars might have the best strength of schedule. Eh, I'm not sure that they I could. Been, like I was going to say, my, my combo favorite here of teams that are probably on the wire, the San Francisco 49ers, Week 15, Falcons, Championship Week, Houston Texans, and Jacksonville, uh, in the middle of that, the semis, get the New York Jets. And – Look at what look look who Jacksonville has become the last two weeks, and that's their defense has really stepped up. I, I mean, they got I get it, they got gouged by Jonathan Taylor in, in the first quarter, but then they locked it down. They locked down the Buffalo Bills. They are they are interesting to me. I think they are good enough to stream against the the, the New York Jets. Think about the psychological battle you'd you'd wage by starting the Jacksonville Jaguars <laughs> defense against your opponent. And how confident they would be going into that game. Uh, the Eagles, you could probably do worse. I mean, they, yeah. they've they been playing some better football, and they have Washington twice with Taylor mm -hmm. Heineke, who tends to turn it over, to wing it. Yeah, and then the uh, Giants in between with Daniel Jones, who tends to turn it over. Turn it over. I, uh, would, uh, I would throw out the Miami Dolphins as well as someone to target for the beginning. There's a couple of teams, the, the Saints and the Buccaneers, they have awesome – like, if you compare the Dolphins with the Buccaneers and the Saints, the Dolphins play the Jets in Week 15, and then the Buccaneers and the Saints have great 16-17 uh, schedules. I'm going to throw one defense out that you probably want to avoid counting on in the playoffs, which is Baltimore. They play Green Bay, Cincinnati on the road, and then the Rams. So you have three formidable mm -hmm. offenses that they're facing, and they've been kind of uh, hit and miss this year. They've been up and year. down, yeah. So uh, I would stay away from them. And then the Panthers, who yeah. you've been able to ride, Buffalo, Tampa Bay, New Orleans, they're also not a defense you can rely on in the playoffs. Agreed. All right, let's do some Thursday night preview. <laughs> 
Thursday Night Breakdown. Oh, man, another brand new drop right there, huh? Yeah. You yeah. ever heard that never one? never heard that before. Uh, wow. First time. I, just, I, just, I whipped that thing up this yeah. morning. Yeah. All right, the New England Patriots at 6-4 and four take on the 4-5 and five Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, New England minus 7. The over-under is 47.5. Take a deep breath. Try to look beyond one week because last week the Patriots demolished the Browns and the Falcons um, just got destroyed by the Cowboys. So – you know, in a one-week sample, I think uh, we'd be you know, DraftKings would have the line at New England minus thirty-six. So, realistically, here at home, Atlanta, they, what do they got to do here to give you fantasy value? It on, on paper it looks bad, but you know, seven points is not a huge line. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I'm trying. I, I'm trying to find I get some it. way to see an upset happen. I am here. surprised that the DraftKings sportsbook line gives the Atlanta Falcons essentially 20 points. Yeah, um, who's that, scoring? I can't imagine Atlanta getting 20 points. Now they are at home, um, in a dome. Maybe Matt Ryan has a good game. I think the I think where you start with this game is Kyle Pitts. Um, he, he's someone that I just I think that. Bill Belichick and a great New England defense without Calvin Ridley will be able to take Pitts out of this game. That would be where I would focus. You don't have Cordero Patterson, or you might not have Cordero Patterson. So, man, being able to just focus on the rookie, take him out of the game, um, you know, aside from two big blow-up games in Week 5 and Week 7, he's averaging 6.3 fantasy points per game in his other seven games. This just isn't the matchup for him. Um, so, but it's not going to be actionable, right? I mean, you if you have Kyle Pitts, you're playing Kyle Pitts. No, I would play Dan Arnold. I would play Dan Arnold over wow. Kyle Pitts. I think Pitts will be fine. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's certainly talented. Talent seven can overcome tar seven targets in this game. Not going to be enough. Seven, eight targets. I could see him getting eight targets and catching two of them with double coverage on every play. Hmm. Okay. Um, wasn't how did Hooper do last week against New England? Thought he had a he had a didn't a, he have a game he had a touchdown just a touchdown okay. and it was one of those it was a goal line he was four for twenty five with a score but it was that it was a goal line touchdown and it was super weird because Dearness carried the entire offense down to the goal line and then they're like oh we're gonna throw it four times yeah it'll be it'll be interesting to see what they do because obviously Russell Gage and Zacchaeus and Tajay Sharp and Wayne Gallman do not represent the biggest threat to New England. New England has given up 27.3 fantasy points per game to the wide receiver position, which is something that you need to, when you look at Kyle Pitts, you got to count both of those situations because he lines up out wide 30 mm -hmm. to 40% of the time. Uh, if Cordero's active, period, let's just ask the question. If he's active for the game, is he in your is he in your lineup? Oh yeah, he's gosh. in my lineup. I think that he'll be involved in the passing game enough to where he will uh, not – goose my team and yeah so I, I would start him the real question to me is let's say he's out out Wayne Gallman or Mike Davis Gallman. either I neither lean, I go Gallman too man I I want to go Gallman I would go Davis but I'm Gallman at least has upside because he has juice left and maybe if one of these guys is going to have a great game it's going to be Gallman I would expect that Mike Davis has a better albeit bad game I I get it I yeah. get it. That that's exactly my thought process. What you summed up of like, if somebody's going to do something that I'm actually happy with, it has to be the guy with juice. But yeah, it's not. I mean, I try not to play either one. Yeah, that'd be that, nice. That, that's a better plan. I'd I'd like to play the other run, the running backs on the other side, the Patriots running. Would backs. you? We got to go flow chart here again. Yeah, it's the Falcons. Damian Harris. Any news today, Brooksy? Can you vet that for us? Because they they might be walking around on the practice field soon. Anything new? Just so a far? moment. Okay, one moment. Was that, Dude, was that, a, was space. that a robot? I want, I want some hold music here. Oh, that was office space. Just a moment. Hold, please. Uh, Damian Harris, right back into the top of the flow chart if he's active. Mike? Yeah. Ramondre startable even if Harris is active? Uh, Jason, you're shaking your head. I, I'm shaking my head. We're getting a, a little alert here. Lamar Jackson was sent home with an illness. Won't practice today. It is not COVID-related. But I'm shaking my head because I just don't think there's ever been 
Does he have the worst immune system in football? He has had a lot of illnesses. I just messed this. I'm like, get this guy some vitamins. Seriously, vitamin C, man. And mid-game poop breaks. Maybe this is all stomach. (laughs) Are these all stomach things? Yeah. Does he got Crohn's? He's great great at football. but could have Crohn's. He's got some, you know. Yeah, Lamar. It's like, figure it out, man. It's okay. (laughs) It's okay to admit you you, you get sick all the time. Yeah. Um, Where were we? (laughs) Uh, we were talking uh, Ramondre. Okay. If if Damian Harris, we're, we're doing the flow chart. If Harris is in, do you have the stomach to play Ramondre? Stevenson? I think you. I think you should. I yeah. think you could flex him. That's where I've gotten to as well. I. Uh, it, it's really a question about: Are they going to put Brand? It, would it be Harris and Brandon Bolden? And I just don't. I, I'm starting to think it won't be. I'm starting to think it'll be Harris and Ramondre. That's what it should be. He has the skill set to do it. Um, you saw Brandon Bolden last week, only on the field, 27% of snaps. I think that this is a game where the Patriots are going to be winning, and if that does happen, then it's even worse for the pass-catching specialist in Brandon Bolden. So I think I'm fine starting Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson, and I would love to start Ramondre Stevenson if Damian Harris doesn't play. Yeah, the Falcons are 29th in the league against fantasy running backs. I'm only like if both of these guys are in, I'm only 60 40 that Harris has the better game. That's where I'm at. The unpredictable Bill Belichick, not afraid to play a player that's on fire, or playing better. This is going to be a JJ Taylor game. Oh, gosh. You, what was nice to see is that Brandon Bolden, I think, only had six touches last week. So, in a game that, that coming off of the concussion, Ramondre hadn't practiced mm-hmm. and they put him out there and they barely let anybody else touch the ball. So, that could give you a, a pat on the butt for Damian Harris coming right back into that role. Somebody who's had a lot of volume in the offense. Mike, are you more skittish on the Ramondre side? I, if Harris I am. Is in? Okay. I am. But, I but, can see you're kind of shaking over there a little sweaty. A little bit, but I've also got, you guys want to hear a, re- a real funny stat? Oh mm-hmm. boy. And it's like, what do you do with this? Uh, since week three, the wide receiver 15 is Kendrick Bourne. Kendrick Bourne in that time period averaging 11.4 fantasy points per game in a half point scoring format. That is 0.4 behind Adam Thielen. That is 0.4 behind Terry and Mike Williams. He That is more points per game than Devontae Smith. Like <clears throat> He is a part-time player who has managed to hit a home run in four of those games. So like, do you are I, you willing to take the shot on Kendrick Bourne. No. Mm, I'm not. And I don't I, think so. You know, you look at look at the last, you know, couple weeks, his snap percentages. 40, I, that's what it's, it's, 43%, it's insanity. 53%, 30%, 54 But do you play him or 50. Jacoby? Because Jacoby's on the field more, but and, and obviously Jacoby Myers has scored in 100% of his most recent games. That is true, but... And Just a touchdown monster. I, his targets have been going down. Where yeah yeah he's the guy who's on the field but he before this touchdown game which the touchdown game in the touchdown game in garbage time with a backup quarterback until then the target's like, going down because they're running the football and they're winning games and their defense yeah, is great exactly sure. what's happening and if so you then project you, this game this is a game that they project that they're going to be able to run the ball a lot and not throw it and win the game so I think it's a fair question then do you go with, with the home run, do you just go for the big play then? Yeah, yeah th- that's fair. I maybe, think, maybe you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you go with another team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> another team. Uh, Mac Jones, I do think you can stream him. Do you know his 69 percent completion rate is the highest ever for a rookie quarterback? That's the nicest. That's very nice. Um, I will say this: if I put the over under at 0.99 uh, touchdowns for Hunter Henry in this game, <laughs> where, where are you going? Take the over. Yeah, because he gets a touchdown every game. I mean, that's the nice thing for Mac Jones is you know he th- he he starts with one passing touchdown because he's got Hunter, Hunter Henry. Henry. <laughs> he just defaults the one. Yeah, just um, okay, all right. Uh, don't forget to take your Thursday night players out of the flex. Yes. So Ooh, that's a question: Hunter Henry or Kyle Pitts? Same game. Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts. I get it. He scores every game, but if if that doesn't happen, then it's nothingness yeah and i want uh i want the week five week seven yeah the, hunter henry does not have the potential for a 20 point game kyle pitts does 
Man, it's going to be fun to watch this. this but Hunter this Henry will outscore Kyle Pitts in this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's the exact same uh, uh, Wayne Gallman, Mike Davis situation where Kyle Pitts is the one you want to start because he's got the chance for the better game. But Hunter Henry will probably have the better mediocre game. That's how I view it. <sighs> I'm going to be watching Kyle Pitts closely because I'm not going to want to have my eyes on any other Falcons. Yeah, yeah, I don't blame you. Kyle the Borgogan is going to be at that game. That's right. Scouting it firsthand. Kyle, I need you to make the other Kyle do something out there on the field. They're going to be playing from behind the whole game, right? Yes. We can get a, we can get a whole quarter of garbage time from Kyle Pitts. That's true. Garb Honestly, the fourth quarter might be Kyle Pitts time. Yeah. All right, uh, and this is where the Falcons win, 37-3. to three. I sure. mean, this is just how the NFL works. Don't bet it. This year. And um, before you watch the game, you need to do that. You know how you put the baseball bat down and you spin around it a bunch of times? Uh -huh. It's easier to consume mm. the NFL that way. <laughs> uh, that's it for today's show. We got starts of the week, matchups on tomorrow's episode. Did you find anything, Brooksy? No, sir. Mm. We'll good. get it tomorrow. Prepare good, your good work over there. Prepare your calendars for next week. The Megalodon. Oh, yes. <sighs> Megalodon. That's going to be fun and exhausting. Uh, we will see you tomorrow, Foot Clan. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. <laughs>